but this cord that's going to stay in place for eight to ten minutes while the patient bites on the anatomic compra caps is really the cord that's going to provide the space for the impression. Uh, that's not going to happen from uh, that bottom cord. That bottom cord is strictly retraction and to stop any bleeding from happening. Now typically my assistant would take out this top retraction cord and we'd go ahead and start uh, putting some polyvinyl uh, impression material in place. But as you can see, I'm not doing that. In fact, I'm using the iOS uh, powder to go in and powder the two teeth that we've prepped. I'm powdering the ovate ponic receptor site, and I'm making sure that uh, I get some powder on the adjacent teeth as well. The big thing about the iOS fast scan that I love, you'll notice that I don't have to move the camera at all. But when it finally scans like it does right there, as you see that line going from side to side, it does the entire quadrant without me moving the camera. So this is the one scanning system where you don't have to move the camera. The, the camera is actually inside the wand moving back and forth on its own. So you don't have to move from tooth to tooth to tooth to take a picture. It does the whole quadrant for you once you've lined up the wand in the correct position. So this is our third scan. We did an incisal, we did a lingual, and now we're doing a facial scan. And from the three of those, it's it puts those together and, and comes up with a model and does it pretty quickly. And so you're able to see the model, you're able to see your preps to see what they look like. I'm gonna go in here and do two extra scans. These are bonus scans that really don't necessarily need to be done. And I'm getting the proximal contacts on the teeth next to the two prepared teeth. Uh, some dentists, skip this step. I don't know. I just like giving lots of information to the lab techs. That's, I guess, what happens when you practice inside a dental laboratory. You, you know, begin to see pretty quickly what lab techs like, and it's usually more information, not, not less. So we powder the lower teeth, patient bites together. I scan the bites, just one scan from the facial, as you see here, and we'll get the relationship between those two teeth, and I'm done. I leave the room at that point, and now my assistant's going to powder the uh, opposing teeth and do those same three scans on those three teeth. Uh, she's going to do the incisal, the lingual, and the facial. And you could probably do two of them, just the incisal and the facial, if you wanted to. But again, when you work with technicians, uh, you, you get used to um, wanting to provide for them the best that you can provide the most information because you, you definitely see an increase in the quality of work that comes back. Uh, the better res the better information that you send out, the most more likely you are to get a, a crown that not only fits, uh, but looks good, has proper morphology, and all those types of things. So she's got her three scans here to get the opposing arch, and then that powder just rinses right off. It's uh, it's pretty simple. Obviously, uh, doing digital scans like this in the anterior a little bit easier than doing it in the posterior. It worked just fine here. Uh, on this case, we're using our Vita. Uh, compact easy shade on the adjacent tooth and seeing what we get getting B2 at the junction of the cervical third and the middle third and A1 in the incisal third and we'll pass that information on along with a digital color photograph to the technician to show them what we're shooting for. My assistant's going to cement the biotemps bridge with a couple pieces of floss underneath it and uh, you do this because it's uh, really important to make sure that you get all those little pieces of cement out of that ovate ponic receptor site. You know we're going to have that healing now for a couple of weeks and we need to make sure the floss goes underneath there and, and there's times where you put on bridges and it's just really difficult to get the, the floss in there so we want to make sure when we go in with the floss uh, that we cement the bridge with it in place you can use super floss too if you want to